Good evening and welcome to you all for this service of Evening Crown, Saturday the 3rd of July. As you can tell, as the day has gone on, I've got a bit chilly and I've got my cardigan back on again. Today we have been keeping the feast of Thomas the Apostle and remembering his life and what we read of him in the Gospels. We've also been remembering all those who are being ordained over this weekend, for those who today have been ordained priest and for those who've been carrying out those services in the cathedral. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will at his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter, and the secret hiding place, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me high upon a rock. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 139. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Even darkness is no darkness with you, the night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you created my inmost parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. O oh, that you would slay the wicked, O oh God, that the bloodthirsty might depart from me. They speak against you with wicked intent. Your enemies take up your name for evil. Do I not oppose those, O oh Lord, who oppose you? Do I not abhor those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my own enemies also. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. See if there is any way of wickedness in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Creator God, may every breath we take be for your glory. May every footstep show you as our way, that trusting in your presence in this world, we may, beyond this life, still be with you, where you are alive and reign for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading this evening is taken from the book of Job, chapter 42, verses 1 to 6. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I despise myself, and repent in dust and ashes. Here ends our first reading. Christ was believed in throughout the world and taken up in glory. Christ Jesus was revealed in the flesh and vindicated in the spirit. He was seen by angels and proclaimed among the nations. Believed in throughout the world, he was taken up in glory. This will be made manifest at the proper time by the blessed and only sovereign who alone has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light. To the King of kings and Lord of lords, be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. Christ was believed in throughout the world and taken up in glory. Our second reading is taken from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, reading verses 3 to 12. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in at the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated, when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you. In regard to the things that have now been announced to you, through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat. On the foundation stones of the heavenly city are written the names of the apostles of the Lamb. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. On the foundation stones of the heavenly city are written the names of the apostles of the Lamb. So let us pray. So today, as we remember and give thanks for the example of Thomas, so, as we know, we read in the Gospels about his life, the fact he was called by Jesus to follow him, 
He was often the question asker that led Jesus to be able to teach. And then was the doubter until Jesus appeared before him. We give thanks, Lord, for the words that he spoke of my Lord and my God and help us to recognise Jesus as the same in our lives, we who have not seen and yet still believe. We pray for those churches, people and places who are dedicated to St Thomas, for those in our own deanery and diocese. On this weekend, we pray especially for all those who will be ordained. We pray for the 24 ordinands as they prepare to follow God's call. And we pray particularly today for the 12 candidates who will be ordained priest at Blackburn Cathedral. We give thanks for them, for the work that they have already done and the work they will continue to do in the parishes where they serve. We pray for Bishop Julian, Bishop Philip and Bishop Jill as they have led these services. And we pray for those 12 as they will have their first mass services tomorrow, be welcomed into their parishes and for those who are still preparing to be deaconed. Lord, we give you thanks that you place a call on each of us. For some, a call to ordination. Some, a call to lay ministry. Some, a call to all the different walks of life. We thank you, Lord, that you guide us and strengthen us to be able to follow in the footsteps and the pathway that you have placed before each of us. As we pray for our world, we pray for the troubled areas of our world. We pray for the wildfires in Canada and for those affected by adverse weather, for those who are facing the landslides in Japan. We pray for the reported famine in Ethiopia, we pray for those who are in search and rescue, for those emergency services and for all those aid agencies and workers who try to alleviate the suffering of your children, whatever it is that they are facing this day. We continue to pray for your gift of peace and an end to warfare and conflict and a calming of our world. We continue to pray for all those who are involved in the fight against this global pandemic, for those who have been working in scientific and medical research, for those working in hospitals, caring for people who are sick, for those who are trying to roll out vaccination programmes, and for the leaders of nations, for the important role and task that they have at this time of guiding their people, of using their gifts of wisdom and discernment especially as they make decisions regarding restrictions and unlocking. We pray for our own government, for the balancing act they have to do between the economy and keeping people safe. We pray, Lord, that we will continue to work to data rather than dates, and for bringing together of all your people across communities, that we would work together and would help one another at this time. We continue to pray for all those who have been our key workers and for those who continue to fulfil that role. We pray for those who are going out to work, for those who work shifts, work through the night and for those who continue to work from home. We pray for those who are unable to work, for those whose businesses are not open for those furloughed and those who have lost their employment. Lord, we pray that you would give them your strength and to ease the fears and anxieties that these difficult times may bring. We continue to pray for the work of our food larders and food banks and cooperatives, for CAP and the credit union, for those who work with debt and those who provide a listening ear and a helping hand. We pray for our young people enjoying their weekend that they would be able to have rest and relaxation and times of play. We pray for those who will be preparing to teach again on Monday, that their lessons would be inspiring and enjoyable for all our young people. We continue, as we have done for so long, to pray for our National Health Service. We pray for those who work within it and those who cross, work across any medical profession 
and are involved in the healing and wholeness of others. We pray for those who work in our local hospitals, for those who've been on the front line today in intensive care, operating theatres or accident and emergency, for those who've been working on wards, carrying out tests and treatments. We pray for those who work behind the scenes, whose roles are often unnoticed and unseen, but are essential for the smooth running of our hospitals. We pray also for our chaplains, for the pastoral care and support that they give to so many. We pray for our hospices and hospice at home, and for the care that they give to those who are nearing the end of their life, and the support for family and friends. We pray for our care homes, sheltered accommodation, nursing and residential homes, and for all those who work out in the community, providing much needed support for people in their own homes. We pray for our GP surgeries, pharmacies and health centres, and for all those places that have been vaccination hubs today, those who have been administering vaccines and those who have been receiving them. And so we bring to you, Lord, those we know who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for David, Alan, John, Jeff, Jim, Elaine, Kath and her family, Christine, Sister Catherine, Douglas, Steve, Joanna, Jean, Jane, Eric, Andrew, Judy, Helen, Scylla, Linda, Cheryl, Joyce, David, Audrey, Alan, Irene and Terry, Lisa, Roman, Hunter, Tracy and Myrtle. Lord, we pray for them and all those that we name in our hearts and minds, for those who are in hospital or those unwell at home, and for those who are on the road to recovery. And so we pray for those who have died. Pray for those who have died this past day, those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries of death occur at this time. Lord, we ask for your blessing and your comfort to be upon all those who mourn, who carry that pain of bereavement, that you would surround them with your love, and show them the hope of the resurrection. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of evening prayer. It's been good to have your company and I hope you have a good evening ahead. For those who will be watching the football, no doubt it won't be quite as quiet as perhaps it might be for others. We have our usual services tomorrow for Sunday when we will be live streaming our 10.30 service to our Facebook page and then there'll be evening prayer at 5 o'clock if you're able to join me for those services. In the meantime, do take care, stay safe, look after yourselves and remain as always in my prayer.